With exploding energy costs in Europe and the growing trend of instability in the power grid, including here in the U.S., it's long overdue that we had an adult conversation about the problems facing the power grid. And that means looking at the whole problem, not just the buzzwords or the politically fashionable talking points. You see, during summer heat waves or winter deep freezes, the press is just awash with headlines about the possibility of power outages, rolling blackouts, the economic consequences, or God forbid, even the loss of human life. But if we only look at these stories in a vacuum, then it seems like a very easy problem to solve. All we need to do is build more windmills and build more solar panels to provide more power, and our problems go away. But this is an overly simplistic and incomplete view of the problem. You see, we have an equally destructive yet entirely opposite problem that never garners any headlines. And that's periods of very low energy demand when there's way too much power supply on the grid. And the economic harm done to power generators during these periods is directly responsible for the shortages of power during those extreme seasonal events that we all read about in the press. And believe it or not, it's Bitcoin miners that presents the perfect solution to this problem. Even though Bitcoin mining is very often maligned in the press as this waste of energy with this environmentally destructive footprint, but as Texas is trying to point out right now, Bitcoin mining can actually be a solution to grid instability using something called demand response to keep things running smoothly. And speaking of keeping things running smoothly, I'd like to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, IOLO System Mechanic Ultimate Defense. System Mechanic Ultimate Defense is one tool that gets you access to an entire suite of premium tools for one low annual rate. It'll boost your PC performance, thwart harmful malware and viruses, and protect your privacy. Your PC is your money maker and your connection to the digital world, and with System Mechanic Ultimate Defense, you can spend less time figuring out what's slowing your PC down and more time watching the market and planning your next trade. It'll keep you safe online with configurable privacy settings that'll let you choose which companies are allowed to collect your personal data, and Active Care ensures peak performance by making system recommendations that boost speed and optimize resources. You can use a link in the description down below or use the promo code NOBODYSPECIAL and you'll get 70% off an entire suite of tools that provide total performance, protection, and privacy. Now to understand how demand response using Bitcoin mining can actually serve to stabilize the power grid, you need to understand a little bit of the basics of how the power grid works, and of course you have to factor in the law of supply and demand. See, to a power grid, not having enough power can cause rolling blackouts, but the opposite problem is also true. If there is too much power supply on the grid and not enough load to take that power, you can also trip breakers and bring down the whole grid. And it's this latter part of the problem that never really makes any headlines, even though that is when the real damage is being done to our grid. And that's because of supply and demand. When there is too much supply and not enough demand, prices go lower. And as we've seen in Texas, we actually have periods when power prices go so low, they actually go negative. And that's because of federal subsidies for renewable energy. Under these federal subsidies, a windmill operator gets $23 per megawatt hour for every megawatt of power he delivers to the grid. That's whether the grid wants it or not. The federal government gives that windmill operator $23 per megawatt hour, which means if that windmill operator is only selling his power for $1 to the power grid, he's still getting $24 because of that $23 per megawatt hour subsidy. That means these windmills are profitable whether anybody wants their energy or not. Now the coal plants, the natural gas plants, the nuclear plants, they don't have that luxury. They need to make a profit because they're not eligible for those federal subsidies. Now, if you get a windy day in Texas in the middle of fall when nobody's running their heat and nobody's running their electricity, you have very low power prices on the Texas grid. But it's windy out, so the windmills are cranking out supply. So you've got low demand and you've got high supply, and the power prices start dropping and start dropping. And it gets to the point where the grid operators say, guys, I can't take any more power. Otherwise, we're going to trip the breakers and the lights go out. So we're going to lower our prices all the way down until you guys stop sending me power. And the prices go all the way to zero in some cases and keep going. Why? Because the windmills are still profitable. As long as the windmills deliver those megawatts to the grid, they get that $23 per megawatt hour federal subsidy. So those wind operators can actually bid negative prices into the grid. They can tell the Texas ERCOT grid, we will give you a dollar if you take our power. We'll give you $2 if you take our power because of that $23 federal subsidy they're still netting $21 per megawatt hour. Meanwhile, the coal operators, the gas operators, the nuclear plants, they say, 
well, I'm out, I'm shutting down, it's no longer economical for me to operate. And that means nobody is building those baseload power plants in Texas because of those negative power prices. Nobody can compete with a competitor who is getting paid to give away their product for free. And it's because of this problem that during winter or during summer heat waves, we no longer have enough power generation to meet these sudden spikes in demand caused by everybody running their heater, everybody running their AC, because the negative power prices in the spring and the fall put the other generators out of business. Now they're not here when you need them. And then we get events like over this summer when the wind isn't blowing. Well, the windmills are now making up most of your grid, but they're not putting out any power. Now Texas is in big trouble. So what you need to balance out this problem is something called demand response. You need large loads on the grid that can come online or turn off at any time based on market conditions in order to keep things running smoothly. And that's where the Bitcoin miners come in. You see, proof of work cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin use large amounts of power to solve complex calculations in order to mine crypto. It's a very energy intensive operation. Well, during periods of low grid demand, but high grid supply, the grid operators need places to send that extra power. Otherwise, prices keep going lower into negative territory and it causes damage to our operators. So if there are large Bitcoin mining operations on the grid, then the grid operators have more places to send that extra power to. The flip side to that coin is during the summer heat waves or during the winter deep freezes. When there's stress on the grid, when there's so much demand but not enough supply and the power prices start rising, the Bitcoin miners is one of those loads that you can shed. You can turn them off in order to reduce demand to make sure your grid doesn't fail. See, Bitcoin mining is this big power intensive operation, but it doesn't have to run 24 seven, not like your factories, not like your hospitals or your schools or people heating their homes. That doesn't really change based on market conditions. People need to stay warm, whether prices are high or low. But the Bitcoin miners don't have to mine if power prices are too high. And at the same time, the Bitcoin miners can take advantage of lower prices by mining during periods of low demand. And with that, we are going to shrink my big melon of a head. And look what just happened in Texas. This is dated August 18th. A Texas cryptocurrency mining business got $9.2 million to cut power last month for grid stability. A Texas cryptocurrency mining business got millions of dollars to cut power last month. In July, the state power grid manager gave Riot $9.5 million in power credits to cut back on production during peak electricity demand. As energy demand in ERCOT, which is the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, reached all-time highs this past month, the company voluntarily curtailed its energy consumption in order to ensure that more power would be available in Texas. Riot curtailed a total of 11,717 megawatt hours in July, said Jason Less, CEO of Riot, in a press release. Now, ERCOT's fact sheet says one megawatt can power 200 homes during peak demand. ERCOT gives energy credits for certain power users to curtail activity. Those credits can be used against future power bills. So what happened here is Riot didn't exactly get paid $9.5 million to shut down. What ERCOT did is they told Riot, hey, we're kind of struggling to keep the lights on and to keep the AC running for everybody. So if you shut down right now and save $9.5 million in today's power, we'll give you $9.5 million of tomorrow's power later on. The difference is later on during those other periods of low demand, that $9.5 million of power is going to go a whole heck of a lot further. You'll be able to mine way more Bitcoin using that same dollar value of energy during periods of lower demand. So this was actually a great business decision for both the power grid and for Riot. Riot gets cheaper power later on so they can mine more Bitcoin at a later date. And the ERCOT power grid gets less load at a time when they desperately need it. So the people of Texas were at less risk of having a blackout. Bitcoin mining is one of those loads that you can easily shed. It's not like your hospitals or your industrial facilities that need to run constantly. So this ended up being a very advantageous situation for all parties involved. Reading on from this article, curtailing the company's power consumption reduced Bitcoin production by an estimated 21% in July, but also significantly reduced Riot's power costs for the month. By providing power back into the ERCOT grid during periods of peak demand, the company estimates that power credits and other benefits from curtailment activities 
totaled an estimated $9.5 million, significantly outweighing the reduction in Bitcoin mined. So as you can see here, instead of treating cryptocurrency miners like these environmentally destructive pariahs that need to be shut down and put out of business, the Texas grid has actually developed a symbiotic relationship with the crypto miners where they agree to shut down or come back online based on market conditions so that the power grid can run more smoothly and the people of Texas are not faced with blackouts in the summer like we could have had this year or blackouts in the winter like that deep freeze we saw in 2021. So long story short, you have to look at the entire problem. The instability in the power grid is not caused by a fact that we just don't have enough power. The instability in the power grid is caused by imbalances in supply and demand. We have too much supply during low demand periods, and we don't have enough supply during high demand periods. And Bitcoin mining is the perfect, flexible demand response that can be used to offset those swings to keep our power grid more reliable everybody wins and if you think i'm kidding check out this video i made a couple of months ago about what happened in kazakhstan when the government got the idea in their head that they should shut down all their bitcoin mining in order to lower power prices it actually ended up causing a grid instability that tripped off power to the entire country until next time live small and dream big